Sully here, the retired tanker yanker. Welcome to Transitions. Remember, if you're not a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button and make sure you like and share this video. This year marks the 100th season of the National Football League. They started play back in 1920. Now, one of the biggest controversies of the league took place not deflate gate, not Spygate, but in 1925, when the league champion Pottsville Maroons were stripped of their title and banished from the league. And the reason they were stripped of their title and banished from the league is because they played in a prearranged game for the World Championship of Professional Football. The Maroons began their existence as the Pottsville Eleven. They were an independent team playing in the local Eastern Pennsylvania circuit. Their home games were played at Minersville Park, which was a high school stadium. And in 1924, they joined the local Anthracite League. That was the year they adopted the nickname Maroons. Dr. John Striegel, who had recently purchased the team for the sum of $1,500, wanted new uniforms for the team, and he contacted local sporting goods merchant Joe Zacco and asked for uniforms. He said, I don't care what color they are as long as you can give me 24 of the same color. Zacco found 24 maroon football jerseys and sent them over to Striegel. Striegel liked the color of the uniform so much that he decided to nickname the team the Maroons. After winning the Anthracite League title, the Maroons decided it was time to move on. The Anthracite League actually folded after the 1924 season. So in 1925, Striegel applied for membership to the National Football League. Now this may not have seemed like a great idea, but the league actually liked the idea of having a team nearby to Philadelphia, where the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets played. Now at the time, Pennsylvania Blue Laws forbade the playing of professional sports contests on Sunday. These Blue Laws were strictly enforced in Philadelphia, but were rarely enforced in nearby Schuylkill County. The idea was to give the Yellow Jackets an opponent on Saturday and to give that opponent a chance to make another payday by going to Pottsville and playing on Sunday, where once again they really didn't care about the Blue Laws. It is sometimes reported even that Prohibition was considered a nasty rumor. Doc Striegel hired former Colgate University coach Dick Rauch to be the head coach of the Pottsville Maroons. Rauch insisted that his players live in Pottsville and that they practice regular. In 1925, the Maroons compiled a nine win, one loss, and one tie record. But many people around the league believed that it was because they were playing the teams who hopped over from playing the Yellow Jackets in Philadelphia the day before and they were beat up. Pottsville was actually 5 1 0 in those games. And in fact, the Maroons' only loss in 1925 was to the rival Frankfurt Yellow Jackets in a game played in Pottsville. However, later in the season, the Maroons got their revenge by traveling to Philadelphia, where they beat Frankfurt by a score of 49 to nothing. Now, their only other opponent with a comparable record was the Chicago Cardinals. They were the two top teams in the league now, Chicago and Pottsville. And the championship in that year was going to go to the team with the best record. So as fate would have it, Chicago and Pottsville met on December 6, 1925. The game was played at Comiskey Park. The Maroons won the game by a score of 21 to seven. This gave the Maroons the title as champion of the National Football League. Now, earlier in the season, the idea was floated to play a game between the NFL champion and a team of Notre Dame alumni. 
known as the Four Horsemen and Seven Mules. The 1924 Notre Dame University football team was considered the finest football team ever assembled. And although they did try to enter the league as an NFL franchise, the league wanted the Four Horsemen split up among the league. The Four Horsemen decided that they wanted to stay together in the pros and they wanted to establish a franchise in South Bend, which the league, of course, denied. The game was arranged by the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets, who fully expected to be the league champion, and the game was scheduled to be played in Shy Park in Philadelphia. However, the Maroons threw a monkey wrench into Frankfurt's plans by defeating them 49-0 and then winning the championship 21-7 from the Chicago Cardinals. The game itself was a pretty exciting one, and the Four Horsemen were leading Pottsville by a score of 7-6 to six as time ran down. Long before the term walk-off win had been coined, Pottsville kicker Charlie Berry let loose a drop kick, which gave the Maroons a 9-7 victory. However, during the course of the game, Striegel had a telegram in his pocket from Joe Carr saying that if the Maroons went ahead and played the game, they would be suspended from the league. This is because the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets had arranged a game against Cleveland the same day. They claimed that Pottsville had been violating their territorial rights by playing the game at Shy Park in Philadelphia. Now, no such rule actually existed, but Carr, already holding a grudge against Pottsville and against Striegel, ruled in Frankfurt's favor. Ordered the game a forfeit, ordered the game suspended, ordered the team suspended, and banished them from the league and stripped them of their title. The league championship was then awarded to the Chicago Cardinals, but in order for them to arrange to have a better record than Pottsville, they had to play two hastily arranged games against teams which are already disbanded. These games featured high school and college players, and of course the Cardinals won both games. After the season, it was determined that the games played by the Cardinals against these two hastily assembled teams should be counted as forfeits because there were ineligible players playing in those games. Now, during the 1925 season, the Maroons played a game against the Chicago Bears in which Red Grange was paid the princely sum of $500 to appear in the game. On the first play of the game, Grange was not cold. The game was stopped, Grange recovered, went back in for the second play, and on that snap, he was not cold a second time. The game was suspended while Grange was resuscitated. After that, Grange just left the game and said to hell with the money. I'm not going to get killed out there. It's just not worth it. Grange and his agent, C.C. Pyle, were planning on a move, however. They wanted to establish a league to rival the National Football League. They called it the American Football League. With Pottsville suspended, despite the fact that they were still claiming the World Championship, Grange and Pyle issued an invitation to Striegel to join the league. And they did, with the understanding that they would be called the 1925 World Champions. This scared NFL owners, and Carr decided to reinstate Pottsville. He said he would look into the issue of reinstating the title, but of course he never did. However, that's when Pottsville's fortunes began to fade, and by 1928, the team was losing money, the team was losing games, and the franchise was sold. The team moved to Boston for the 1929 team where they were renamed the Bulldogs, but they never recovered. And with the recession and, in fact, the depression that came on, the Pottsville Maroons slash Boston Bulldogs folded. Although it's been 94 years since Pottsville won the World Championship, there are people there who don't forget. There have been many attempts to get the issue revisited and to have the Pottsville Maroons title reinstated. Now, immediately after the game, 
The Frankfurt Yellow Jackets lodged a protest with the NFL. League President Joe Carr upheld the Yellow Jackets' protest. He fined the Maroons $500 and banished them from the league. He claimed that he had issued three warnings for Pottsville not to play in the game. Now, there have been many attempts to reinstate the Pottsville Maroons as world champions for 1925. The Cardinals did not accept the championship until 1933 when Charles P. Bidwell purchased the team. And to this day, the Bidwell family still owns the Cardinals, even though they have relocated first to St. Louis and now to Phoenix, Arizona. The Chicago Cardinals became the St. Louis Cardinals, and the St. Louis Cardinals became the Arizona Cardinals. And they still claim the 1925 League Championship. Now, there was a committee formed in 1967 to look into the 1925 controversy. But the owners of the league in that year voted 12 to 2 to not reinstate the championship for Pottsville and kept it with the Cardinals. Now, this controversy continued up until the year 2003 when then Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell met with NFL officials to discuss the idea of reinstating the Maroons as 1925 champions. Paul Tagliabue was then the uh, commissioner of the NFL and he put it to a vote. And the vote was 30 to 2 against reinstating the Maroons. The only two votes that favored reinstating the Maroons were from Pittsburgh Steelers and Philadelphia Eagles. That's right. Jeffrey Lurie and Dan Rooney were the only ones that voted to reinstate Pottsville. In 2005, ESPN the magazine ran an article about the Pottsville Maroons stolen championship. It was written by David Fleming. And two years later, Fleming published a book called Breaker Boys. He also participated in debates which were sponsored by both ESPN and the NFL. One of the debates was held in Pottsville and Fleming spoke for the reinstatement of Pottsville. Now, if you want to go back to statistics, there is evidence that says that they should be reinstated. I mean, the statistics of the Maroons prove that they were the best team in the league that year. They had some of the best players. And the territorial claim that the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets used as the basis for their protest, turns out there is no such rule in the National Football League, and there never was. There is a fact that Carr held a grudge against Doc Striegel for taking two of his best players in 1924. Be that as it may, to this date, the Pottsville Maroons claim that they were the 1925 world champions. Well, that's something that cannot be taken from them, but their league championship has been denied by the NFL, and any attempt to reinstate it has been voted down. You be the judge. I recommend that you read David Fleming's book and see what you think about it. But it's always been my opinion that the Pottsville Maroons were robbed. They deserved that championship title in 1925. And maybe, just maybe, one day, the rightful winners of the 1925 World Championship will be recognized. For transitions, this is Sully, the retired tanker yanker. Safe and happy travels.